Hi, I wanted to make a short video about Hoshin planning. It's a very important concept for businesses, and if used right, it'll really propel you forward. Hi, Brian McCorder, Black Belt Lean Thinking. And it's been a while since I made videos. I've been busy uh, doing a move relocating from Kansas to Texas, so a lot going on in the forefront. But this is a, a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, I've written a lot of articles on Hoshin, and my book X Factor is really centered around Hoshin planning. And there are some stages that are really important. Like I said, they really put a lot of wind in the business sail propelling you forward. And it'll even help us to kind of navigate the waters well and avoid some rocks and some problems that tend to sink businesses. Often I will hear if I ask a, a manager or a business owner you know, what their main goal is, they immediately go to profit. And there's a problem here. Profit should not be the number one goal of a business. And on some level, we all know this. This is why businesses don't advertise profit. You wouldn't eat at a restaurant that advertised we make the most money of any restaurant here in town, or we have the highest profit margin. Again, we see these as a necessity for businesses to stay in business, but their value is in providing goods and services. You know, uh, the profit is a lagging indicator. Again, I'll hear businesses say things like, uh, or business owners, uh, business owners say things like, yeah, profit is to business like oxygen is to a human. We need it to survive. Very true, but I haven't met a human yet who sees his purpose as to breathe air. It's a something we need to sustain us, but again, it's not our purpose yeah, it's, for being there alive. There are steps that, um, I'm gonna give you kind of the bare bones for Hoshin planning. There uh, are many steps to it, it can get quite involved, but these are the main factors that you really want to rally attention to and give focus to. First step of the Hoshin planning is that goal. Again, your purpose, not profit, should be centered around leading indicators and something that excites you, your employees, your customers, and your suppliers. As a matter of fact, that should be one of your litmus tests. If it doesn't supply everyone in that uh, group that I just mentioned, then there's an issue. Remember, businesses survive as a community. We're part of a symbiotic relationship with employees, customers, and suppliers. Our employees are our team, our family. They're the ones that are gonna get it done. If you don't have happy employees, you're not gonna have satisfied customers. Our suppliers are our business partners. They're the ones working with us to meet the needs of our customers. And the customers are the people we serve. They're the ones where we provide our quality products and services to. I love the uh, IBM as a company. Uh, one of their, their mottos that they stood behind are uh, kind of a three-phase thing of, First of all, we take care of our employees, so dignity of the individual is most important. Then excellence and service, I love it. You know, good quality, excellence, and then actually providing service. So dignity of the individual, excellence, and then service. Great thing for all of us to, to follow. So for your business, what is your goal? What is the purpose? What do you provide? How do you bring value? Again, if you were a restaurant, maybe it would be to provide the best dining experience in this town or in the U.S., you know, to provide the best steaks. Um, if you're a furniture store, to provide you know, the best furniture at the lowest cost with you know, great delivery, good um, uh, customer satisfaction, a lot of things that you can rate. But you need that goal. Again, we need something for people to focus on. Again, if you hand someone a bow and an arrow and say, shoot it, first thing you're gonna, they're going to ask you is that what? We need a target. We need something to aim at. No ship leaves port without a, a point of destination. So we want all our employees and customers and suppliers knowing what we're focusing on. We want them excited about what we bring to the, to the world, about our purpose. So number one, that goal. Number two is the plan to achieve the goal. So that's where you cascade it down through the organization, what that goal is, and you're asking for feedback and engagement from employees to meet it. The greatest things that your employees can bring to you, you cannot buy from them. Uh, important to understand that. You can buy their behavior in terms of showing up at work 
work and doing the job she trained them to do. But the greatest thing they can bring to the table is their uh, engagement, their intuitiveness, their imagination, their resourcefulness. Again, and they have to volunteer that based on if there's trust and loyalty and they view their employer as someone worthy, you know, to bring that to. Uh, in the U.S., we have a, a low uh, engagement pretty much with uh, many employees in many different industries because these things are not happening. And again, with my own interviews of company owners, I'm finding the, this is a shortfall. Again, when I ask about the goal, they often go to profit and marketing growth and things that, again, Again, these are lagging indicators you need. They measure how well you're doing as a business, but they're a byproduct of providing goods and services. So again, number one is the goal. Should be purpose-oriented that meets the needs of customers, suppliers, and employees. Two is cascading that plan or that goal down and then putting the plan in place. How are we going to meet that need? How are we going to achieve our goal? What are we going to do? Get everyone involved in that. People don't like being told what to do. We'd rather be told what the problem or goal is than given the chance to give our two cents in, uh, giving our scope of control, you know, as a waiter, a cook, a manufacturing employee, whatever. You know, let me uh, get involved in helping us to meet that goal so I can be a part of it. That's exciting. Okay, number three is and coming up with good key performance indicators so that you know if you're hitting that. So again, if, if I decide to run a marathon, um, my goal is to, to cross that 26 mile marathon. I set up uh, the plan of training. Maybe I'm gonna run four days a week and do a long run on Saturdays. And then I'm gonna measure it uh, every week. I'm gonna look back and see, did I get my miles in? Was I successful? What was my time like? The neat thing is when you have your goal, you have your plan, you're following it, and course correcting is needed, this is where confidence comes from. Again, you know the lagging indicators are gonna be there because you're doing all the right things to move forward. Your customers are delighted, your suppliers are excited to be part of the, the team, and your employees are excited to go to work and they feel like there's, they're valued, there's loyalty, there's trust. Goal, plan, um, key performance indicators and know you're doing it and then course correcting you know monitoring and, and changing courses you need to final thing is rewards you know no one does anything for long if they feel that they're being taken advantage of or they're not valued you need to show that you value your customers you value your suppliers you value your employees then exciting things happen Again, in the market today where competition is more fierce and customers have more choices and we all have a way of giving feedback, be it on Amazon, Yelp, whatever. Again, now is the time where if companies have a good understanding of the goal, they have that Hoshin planning, wow, uh, they're going to leave their uh, competitors you know, in their wake. Um, these are the customers that are going to have bright futures. Or th these are the companies that are going to have bright futures. This is what we want to be involved in. Hopefully that made sense to you. Again, we all need profit like we all need oxygen, but it can't be our purpose for being a business. Thank you. Uh, be sure and hit like, uh, share this. Again, I'm, I'm up to uh, 128 subscribers, which is really amazing. And I love the messages. Anytime I get a, a message from you, I will always respond. Love talking about lean productivity and safety. So thank you. Until next time, Brian McCorder with Live Lean Thinking.